news starts right now. A San Antonio nonprofit is caught in the middle of the Oscars controversy because of the name of its foundation. The Will Smith Foundation started here in 2007 to honor the life of a child who was lost too soon. RJ Marquez tells us speaking with the founder of the organization about why she wants to clear up any confusion about their mission. I really don't watch TV, and I certainly, I didn't watch the Oscars. Susan Naylor Sellers, the founder of the Will Smith Foundation in San Antonio, was unaware of the backlash her nonprofit organization was receiving until early Monday morning. I started getting some really odd grant requests, um, people that wanted to fight me and or fight Will Smith. Naylor said she's received messages in the past confusing her foundation with the actor, but this was different. Very, very derogatory, childish almost, comments about the actor. Naylor's foundation has no affiliation with the actor Will Smith. She started the foundation in 2007 to honor her eight-year-old son, William Smith, after he died in a car crash. Our mission statement is to provide positive life experiences for children. And for the past 15 years, the Will Smith Foundation has been helping out children in the community, keeping his name alive and continuing on his legacy. He got to be out outdoors and be around animals and fish and do things that you know, a, a lot of kids in South Texas get to do, but a lot of kids in South Texas don't get to do. A major part of the foundation's legacy is the Will Smith San Antonio Zoo School. Its new campus was named after William in 2018. I am proud that they honored Will that way and carried forward that mission of getting outside, loving each other, loving animals. That was Will. To date, the foundation has supported dozens of local nonprofits for children and will continue despite the recent mix-up. It is important, I think, that San Antonio and the area know that this is their own son. Will was born here. This Will Smith has a kind, benevolent heart. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. The Red Cross called in to help people displaced after a fire destroyed part of an apartment complex over on the city's northwest side this morning. Take a look. Firefighters responding to the 7500 block of Ingram Road on what was initially called out as a dumpster fire at the Silver Oaks Apartments. That fire then spread to another dumpster, then an apartment building. The call went to a second alarm as fire crews fought the flames and evacuated the people who were living there. Firefighters had to go defensive as that burning building began to collapse around them. Five people displaced, but none hurt. Crews managed to keep the fire contained, but a nearby building had smoke and water damage. Arson investigators tonight still trying to figure out the cause of that fire. A San Antonio man was killed in a crash with a tractor trailer in Laredo last night. According to Laredo police, 36 year old Rodolfo Puente Rivera's van stalled in the middle lane of I-35 around 9 p.m. Then a semi slammed into that van, knocking it into the median. The driver of the truck telling police he could not avoid the other vehicle. Officers say that driver did not show any signs of intoxication and even offered to let officers do a blood draw just to prove it. San Antonio police searching for a suspect in connection with a shooting on the northeast side that happened late last night. It all happened at an apartment complex near Loop 410 and I-35 around 1130. Officers say the victim told them he was shot by someone he met on a dating app. The suspect reportedly shined a light in the man's face and demanded cash. Instead of handing over the money, the victim tried to run away. We're told the suspect shot him in the arm, then took off. The wounded man taken to Bamsey for treatment. The courthouse here in Bear County bustling again as in-person jury trials are underway after a long time off because of the pandemic. But now more people are heading into that downtown area and that is creating some challenges. Erica Hernandez with what you need to know before heading to the courthouse and what COVID protocols are still in place. The hallways are crowded and people are going in and out of courtrooms. A good sign that the justice system is moving again. But now parking for those trying to get to the courthouse is a problem. It was kind of hard with all the construction and the parking. Yes, it was hard. So I just found the nearest parking that was open and I just paid myself. But what can you do? One reason for the parking problems, more people are headed to this area now. The federal courthouse just opened up a month or two ago a few blocks from the courthouse and they're using the same parking lot that we used to use in the county. The county says there are no current plans to add parking in the area, but there is an option, public transportation. If you show your jury summons to a via bus driver, the ride is free. Also, just plan ahead. 
While the parking is a hassle, the businesses in the area are excited about more foot traffic. Business is booming. Thank God our customers are appreciating that we go ahead and never close the business, even with COVID in between. So it's just business of the, the city of San Antonio, the courthouse, and we just appreciate it for all the customers. As far as COVID protocols, they have changed a bit and are a bit more relaxed, but courtrooms are still making sure to make sure people feel comfortable. We're still making sure that we're not putting too many folks in a room. We're still making sure that all the protocols that we are told to abide by, by the local health authority, that we are definitely following. If you are feeling a bit uneasy, you can let court staff know and they can make accommodations to make you feel more comfortable. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. New at six, a deadly surge with no signs of slowing down. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the number of deadly crashes spiked across the country in 2021. Over 30,000 of those crashes were reported during the first nine months of last year, the highest total since 2006. And here at home, first responders are seeing record-breaking numbers as well. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos with why some call it a crisis on the roads. The hardest part about doing what we do is just the senselessness of it all. Sergeant Anthony Dimmick is a traffic investigator with San Antonio Police and has responded to countless crashes in his career. Part of the job is to figure out how a crash happened. But when it comes to deadly crashes, Dimmick says family of victims just want to know why it happened to their loved one. That's often the hardest question to answer and, and the one that sometimes it just doesn't have an answer. Over 50 deadly crashes have been reported in San Antonio this year, but last year was a record. San Antonio police saw the number of deadly crashes peak at 205. That's 205 families last year that, that lost someone that was near and dear to them. Um, so just the number itself is just a shocking, shocking figure. The data includes crashes involving pedestrians, cyclists, motorcyclists, and vehicles. Dimmick says oftentimes investigators learn pedestrians were killed while wearing dark clothing or not using crosswalks. And sometimes it's distracted driving or drivers not wearing a seatbelt. The vast majority of them could have been prevented. Dimmick believes this traffic trend is going in the wrong direction. To me, this is a crisis. Now, while it's not clear what caused this uptake in crashes, the NHSTA reports that the increase came as more people return to their daily lives. San Antonio police also citing alcohol and speed as other factors. They encourage anyone attending Fiesta events to plan ahead or use ride sharing services. Stephen Cavazos KSAT 12 News. Guys, back to you. All right, let's take a look at traffic out there right now. This is I-37 at Fair Avenue, but it looks like the accident that is causing this backup right now. That's at I-37 and Hackberry. So you can see traffic is shut down there in several lanes. Traffic looks like it's down to two lanes uh, at I-37 where this accident is happening. Again, up there in the distance from this view at I-37 and Hackberry. If you're a homeowner in Bear County, get ready for this. You're most likely in for some sticker shock. In about a week, the Bear Appraisal District will be sending out notices of new property valuations. And listen to this. On average, appraised values are up nearly 28%. That is huge and unprecedented. By law, appraisals must follow the housing market, and that's hot. High demand and low supply has driven sales prices way up. If you've been in your home for more than a minute, you probably get at least a half a dozen phone calls, letters, offers to buy uh, every day. And it doesn't matter if you're on the east side, north side, west side, or south side. It's happening everywhere. If tax rates remain the same, most people are looking at paying significantly more in property taxes. Now, two things that you can do here. Make sure you're claiming the homeowner's exemption. That will cap the amount you can be taxed on, and you can file a protest. That deadline is May 16th. That music makes you smile. It is finally here. Fiesta, Fiesta in full swing as we kick off the city's party with a purpose. And it's finally back in its full form after COVID forced the cancellation of several major events last year. Getting it all kicked off tonight, Ursula Perry and Steve Spreester live down at Hemisphere. Hi there guys, you know, normally this is a very quiet little park with the beautiful Spanish moss on the beautiful oak trees. And now we've got this, Fiesta Fiesta, 
underway for the first time as planned for the first time in two years. Absolutely. And that's the thing is this is a party with a purpose. We're kicking it off at eight o'clock live right here on KSAT 12. But look at this crowd. I mean, people are already over by the main stage. People are having fun, trading pins, showing off their Fiesta finery. Hi, guys. Viva Fiesta. There you go. You know, this year, people went all out. They've had two years, basically, to get their amazing-looking hats, get their energy up, get all of their costumes made. And I'm telling you, the pins this year are amazing-looking. We're going to show off some of them coming up when we begin our special right here on the grounds of Hemisphere for Fiesta Fiesta. Yeah, we've got you covered. We have Alicia Barrera out in the crowd. We have David Elder from Texas Eats out in the crowd. Of course, Adam. Adam Kasky, who will be joining us here momentarily. Fiona and Mike up on the stage. We are your official Fiesta station. We have you covered at KSAT. We're also going to give you some background on Fiesta, perhaps some things you've never seen before. Yes. And uh, Europe, you've got some surprises. Yes. I'm going to uh, I'm going to a fashion consultant to up my Fiesta fashion game. That'll be part of our special. And let's just say. I was a little uncomfortable with some of the looks. Oh, so okay. there we go. Well, speaking of uncomfortable, I got uh, to ride a horse in a way that I have never ridden a horse before in my 50 or so years in the saddle. So I will explain that during our special as well. And it all starts at 8 o'clock tonight. Absolutely. And coming up at 6.30, I'm going to be talking to the head of Monarch Trophy about medals and their history. It's our KSAT Q&A. But until then... Let's send it back to the studio and Myra and Tim. We're going to go to actually Alicia Barrera, who oh, is out in the crowd right. as well. Hi, Alicia. Hey, you guys. It was kind of tough making it through the walkway here with all the pins. Already have some medals here from the Purple Heart as well as Zulu, Taste of New Orleans. And then quickly, my sash is filling up here. Um, Ursula, you mentioned it. People have had essentially two years to get ready. And a lot of people are asking about the sash. It's the new thing, well, not new. This is what people want more. So Blue Bettys, they're set up here at Hemisphere, closest to Yaniwana Park. Good afternoon, so it's two of you gals who make it. How exactly is this? Skycrafter, two different businesses, yeah. Say it again. Blue Bettys and Skycrafter. All right, so they run for about $35, but these are so unique, totally different from what I have here, and they're padded. I tried to make them thicker, because I'm, I'm native San Antonian, so I know they need to be a little bit thicker to hold up to those heavy metals. So yeah, so they're very durable and I try to make them in fun prints too. So all my Serape Mexican prints go fast, but it's fun. Wonderful, thank you so much. So if you're looking for some Fiesta swag, if you will, this is definitely where you wanna start off because let me tell you, this is gonna fill up pretty quickly. That is the goal for today. And again, stick around because later we're gonna have all the fun live here from Fiesta Fiesta. Steve Ursula, back to you. Thank you so much, Alicia. And of course, no Fiesta could be complete without a cannon full of confetti. Well, but it would put a twist on it this year. Okay. It's a little it's a little secretive, but let's see what Adam Kasky has in store for Fiesta Fiesta tonight, Adam. All right, we're going to take a look outside, zoom way out from Hemisphere here and talk about the conditions out there right now, 81 degrees, and I'm guessing we're expecting confetti, right? <laughs> Yesterday without confetti. We're always going to have at least some Fetty, okay? There's always going to be some. The Canyon may have gotten canceled this year, not by KSAT, but they have gotten canceled, but we can still do a little I bit, know. right? Right? Hey! And we got our Pascarone Holster! Yeah! See, always loaded and ready to go. All right, I'm going to be back to talk about the weather, but also show you some of the unique medals that I've gotten this year, and one that really stands out. We're going to go over that and your forecast in just a bit. All right. Viva Fiesta! Busy day. I'm Stefania Jimenez, and here's what we're working on for you tonight on the Night Beat. A lot of controversy after a Bear County deputy shot and killed a man outside of his home. That deputy no longer faces charges. Some people not too happy about that. Tonight, an exclusive interview. You're going to hear from the deputy at the center of that case. 
Also, watch out because in less than an hour, barriers are going to go up on the St. Mary Strip. So how is that going to work on the first night of Fiesta? We're going to be there to let you know. Plus, we continue our coverage on a specialty court that's supposed to help teens. You're going to hear from a teen who says that the court turned his life around. We'll see you for these stories and a lot more tonight on The Night Beat. Thanks, Stephania. Let's take a look outside with Sky 12. This is the crowd from above down at Hemisphere Fiesta Fiesta. It looks like things are kicking off in a big way out there. Starting to fill out a bit. Perfect weather for Fiesta <laughs> early this year, but really great weather. I know, Tim, you and I were both saying that we don't mind that at all because yeah. it's, you know, it's really not too hot. Not like last year. Yes. In June. A little more sweaty in June. No, Hopefully a little you. less of that this time. <laughs> All right, let's go out there to Adam Kasky standing by to give us our Fiesta hi. forecast. Hello. And saying hi to everybody. Of course, you see? Hey, hey good you to see, see you. See, we're back, right? Fiesta, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. Viva Fiesta, y'all. This is great. This is what's so fun about it. You know, we hang out, have fun. Forecast is fun. It's fun. <laughs> Yes! We're gonna get to the real forecast in a second. First, I wanna show you something quickly. Oh, we got a crowd coming. This is one of my favorite medals so far this year. I bet you I bet you know where it's from. Morgan's Wonderland, the butterfly. It's a Loteria card, La Mariposa. H1 San Antonio, 22, but look at the back as well. Isn't that amazing? I love that. I also love the Toyota one with the new Tundra. It lights up and everything. And there's several others as well that I've gotten today that I've really uh, noticed have stood out. Oh boy, we got a crew over here. We're gonna pull them in after the full forecast. We're gonna need some room really quickly, really quickly. All right, uh, temperatures right now, 80 degrees in town. This is perfect. Even with the sun on us, it's not so bad. And we've got not much of a breeze, which is good. Dew points are down. Lack of humidity here which is a change for Fiesta. All right, let's get to the forecast this evening. Fun, fun is in the forecast this evening. And comfortable temperatures. It's gonna be a nice temperature drop. You know, we made it to 80 degrees for the high today. We're gonna to be down at eight o'clock, 73. 10 o'clock, 65. Fireworks going off around here a little before then. And then tomorrow we start the day at 50. But then we rise to 84 into the afternoon, and you'll notice a bit of a breeze. It's not going to be as stout as days past. I mean, we're not talking gusts to 40 again, but you will notice it at about 20 to 25 miles per hour, that wind. I wish that wind meant some good rain chances. Unfortunately, it doesn't right now. You look at the latest drought monitor updated every Thursday. Shall we say updated every thermometer Thursday? And for the state, 88% of Texas is still in drought. That's the same as last week, but our neck of the woods has actually fallen deeper into drought, particularly south of San Antonio. We're talking roughly Carrizo Springs, especially Catula, Los Angeles, Fowlerton. That's where the exceptional drought has crept in more. Look at our rain chances, nothing through the weekend. By Monday, a few isolated pop-ups possible in the afternoon. And then again, Monday night, we could see some scattered activity. So 30% during the afternoon on Monday, up to 40% some more scattered by Monday night. I know that's a river parade, no need to be worried yet. A lot of it comes down to exact timing and placement. And the parade is just a small little section of our big broad area that we forecast for. Temperatures, mid 80s tomorrow, we talked about that. 80s through the weekend. After morning clouds, we'll have a lot of sunshine this weekend. And then there are those rain chances we talked about Monday afternoon and Monday night. Otherwise, looking sunny and dry again. Hey, back to 90 degrees as we get into next week. She got me. <laughs> oh, we're back. We're back, baby. Come on. Come on. Now it's time for fun. <laughs> now it's time for the fun. Oh. No, nope, not done. <laughs> He's got more. He's got a holster. Wow. Locked and loaded. Yes, oh, he is. Not done yet. Ah. 
they should just go full force and not ease into these things. You know? Well, there might not be the confetti canyon, but he has plenty of confetti on hand for sure. Absolutely. All right, we got more Fiesta fun coming your way, but sports is coming up next. The first round of the Valero Texas Open is almost in the books, and most of the notables are down the leaderboard. Defending champion Jordan Spieth from the bunker on the par 5 14th hole, and that's a great shot to set up his first birdie of the day. He shot an even par 72, as did Rory McIlroy and Ricky Fowler. Your leader is Russell Knox, who opened with a 7 under 65. He's ranked 169th in the world. So Knox has a one shot lead on Rasmus Hogar. Matt Kuchar and Danny McCarthy are both two shots back at 5 under par. The Spurs 112 to 111 loss to Memphis last night pushed them from 10th to 11th place in the West, one half game behind the Lakers for the final play-in tournament spot. Keldon Johnson missed a potential game-winning layup of less than three seconds to go. Grizzlies head coach Taylor Jenkins said it was a brilliant play call. That's how the way we drew it up, um, trying to get Keldon the layup. It was a good look. Um, yeah. Sometimes you're just a little bit unlucky and it rims out. Um, yeah, we've moved to the next game. It's a big game that we should have won. Um, you know, we, we, how we're looking in the playing spot and stuff like that, it was a good, and that would have been good for our momentum, but, you know, it's time to bounce back. Spurs will look to bounce back tomorrow night, 7.30, when they host the Trailblazers. The Tier Pro Swim Series kicked off yesterday in San Antonio. More than 300 swimmers are scheduled to compete, including 21 members of the United States Olympic team. Swimming team, I should say. Alongside them is a San Antonio native who posted a top three finish in his first event. Andrew Seeley has more. I've told a bunch of uh, former coaches of mine, like I never thought I'd be racing here again. Um, and so once I, when I heard that the meet was going to be here, I was like, all right, I have to go. San Antonio native Mikey Calvillo returned to the Alamo City with a new energy. After years of swimming at the Northside Swim Center with O'Connor High School and the Quad A Club team, Calvillo hit the water for the 800 meter freestyle as an Indiana senior and dropped nearly two seconds off of his seed time to finish second overall in eight minutes, 7.64 seconds. I was in a pretty good mood, so I think that really carried me through the rest of the race. And um, I was racing one of my teammates, and so I was kind of chasing him down. and. Uh, once I passed him, I, I knew I was like, all right, I'm feeling pretty good. And I was pretty pleased with, with the results, especially like we're right in season. Calvillo is part of a star studded field featuring Olympic gold medalists like superstars Katie Ledecky and Caleb Dressel. And he hopes to join them as a member of the U.S. national team for this summer's World Aquatic Championships in Budapest. World trials are in a month, and I have some pretty big goals for that meet as well. So this is kind of just like getting a feel for long course um, and just, you know, seeing where I'm at. Um, so after this meet's over, we'll evaluate, make some last minute changes, and then head into World Trials in April. Calvillo qualified for the A final in his second event, the 400 IM as well this morning. Ledecky, by the way, she's gonna be the top seed in the 200 meter freestyle by nearly three full seconds. So we've got some great races in store for tonight. From Northside Swim Center, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. USA Baseball won at number 12 TCU yesterday, 12 to 8. Top of the second, Jonathan Tapia from O'Connor High School comes up with an RBI single to the field, putting the Roadrunners on top for good, 3 to 2. Tapia went at 3 for 4 with three runs batted in. Tuesday night in Carter Word softball beat Baylor 6 to 4. How about that? It's UIW's first win over a Power 5 school since March 2018. And it is also being reported tonight that Manu Ginobili will be a first ballot induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. The entire class will be announced during the men's Final Four. And to me, duh. Yeah, yes. well deserved. Right? <laughs> Thanks, Larry. You got it. All right, we got a special Fiesta themed KSAT Q&A coming your way after this. Today is all about the kickoff of Fiesta 2022, and our KSAT Q&A is no different. We're going to go back down live to Fiesta Fiesta with Steve Spreester to talk all about medals, Steve. Hello, Myra and Tim. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the hello, Myra and Tim. The People's Parade just going by us right here. It kicked off right at 6:30 to give you an idea of what's happening here at Fiesta Fiesta. Actually, the Sam Houston Band led people through the main way here at Hemisphere Park, and now you see a lot of the dignitaries walking by as the crowd cheers them on. Fiesta Fiesta is well underway, and right now I want to talk about what is this big part of Fiesta. It is medals. Kathy Drago from Monarch Trophy joins me right now. Kathy, talk about what 
percentage of your business is made up from Fiesta metals? I will never tell the secret, but it's a lot. <laughs> a lot, I imagine. Yes. Give me some of the history of Fiesta. So Fiesta started in 1971. Well, the metals. The metals, right. The history of Fiesta in metals. 1971 with King Antonio. And King Antonio came out with a metal and the craze started and we picked up on it and it has been just gangbusters. So much fun. When you started, because Monarch Trophy sponsors pin pandemonium, Absolutely. which is what we're seeing with people changing pins and things like that. Yes. Did you ever in your wildest imagination envision something like this? You know, I was hoping for something like this, but this is just over the top. And we are so glad to be back in 2022 because the last two years have been really, really interesting. And we are back for a party with a purpose. You know, Kathy, I know people are probably listening to us talking, but they're probably a little distracted, right? What's going oh, on with sure. the what's going on at the People's Parade right now? So, where does the was it borrowed from a different tradition, or where does the Fiesta Metal idea come from? Well, I just think when King Antonio started it, and then people wanted to do things to promote their nonprofits, they jumped on the bandwagon with it. So, city officials became involved in it. Corporations became involved in it, schools, restaurants, they're all doing it, but they're all doing it for a great cause. Do you have any idea how many different medals you have made this year for Fiesta? Again, big secret. <laughs> Are we talking hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands? We are, we are talking thousands plus. We, we are very, very blessed. When do you start making some of these medals for Fiesta? Yeah, you know, when Fiesta's over, we start for the following year. I am already working on five orders with some companies for 2023, right now as we speak. Are the 2021 Fiesta medals collector's items? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a Ryder medal that's a 2020 slash 2021. And yeah, they're collector's medals because they were during, you know, sold during a really difficult time. Yeah. All right, Kathy, introduce Ryder here and and and, and show the medal that it depicts him. So this is Ryder and Ryder's our shop dog. And here's his special medal. And you can get this at Monarch Trophy Studio. You can get this down at Pin Pandemonium. And I've got something for you. You do? Because it's Monarch's 50th anniversary. And this oh. This is wow. our special medal, and I want you to have that. All right, take a look at this. All right, I also want to show you some of the medals that are on the board over here because they really show. Talk to me about some of the medals that we have on the board over here. The, the, the board medals are awesome. There's a lot of um, from the PMOs here in town that work with the Fiesta Commission. Probably the number one medal that we have this year is the one by the Japanese Tea Garden. It is a stunning medal that David Durbin made. All right, then, so, so here's here's Riders. Yes. All right, then there's like the Buttercrust Fiesta 2022, El Rey Fido, yes. Fiesta 22 with a cat because you can't have a dog and not have a cat yeah, right next to it for the cat, cat people. Yep. I mean, all these different Fiesta medals that are over here. Look at this, a beautiful one with the horse for Rancho Paris. Yep, and the, the thing that is so beautiful about this is all of these medals, they are sold for a purpose. They're sold for, um, you know, something, a cause that someone deeply believes in. And um, and that's what's so important about the sale of these medals. By the way, I know this is one that probably Myra and Tim are gonna like. Hot Lips, Margarita Sips, yes. right there. I'm gonna save this one, I think, for uh, Tim and Myra, because I think they probably will love that one. And um, it just, how is this year being back? After a few years where nothing's back, I mean, what for you personally, what is this like? For me personally, I could not get out here quick enough. I mean, I've just been chomping at the bit and I can feel the excitement. I can feel the spirit. People are excited to be outside in the beautiful weather and to be together in San Antonio. So we are back. We are back. We are back. Kathy Drago from Monarch Trophy, thank you for your time. Thank you, Steve. I really That's appreciate great to it. See it was a you. pleasure. It was a pleasure. Be give back. my give my best to Ryder. Yes, I will. Okay. All right. He was tuckered out. I think he's been going <laughs> all day. Uh, Tim and Myra, we're gonna send it back to you again. Our Fiesta Fiesta special kicks off tonight at eight o'clock. We're gonna be live right here from Hemisphere. So you got a little metal background, you got a little people's parade. We're giving you all kinds of action here. And yes. I am bringing that margarita medal back for you guys. I, so I live that. from That's Hemisphere, nice Steve Spreester, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> I, think I, he, I, I think he gets us. I, I, I'd appreciate a real margarita, but the, the pin would be nice too. We feel seen. <laughs> We're still on the clock here. All right, we'll be right back after this.
Well, as you've seen throughout the afternoon and evening, Fiesta just getting started. We've already gotten a look at what is happening down at Fiesta Fiesta tonight, and there's much more to come throughout the evening. But now we want to give you a little preview of what's in store for this year's Texas Cavaliers River Parade on Monday. This year's theme is all about the Texas outdoors. RJ Marquez with a sneak peek at some of this year's floats. That's right. Earlier this morning, we got a sneak peek at the floats and barges that will be hitting the water for this year's Texas Cavaliers River Parade along the Riverwalk. And this year's theme is Texas Al Fresco. And I have to tell you that these barges and floats definitely are bringing that theme to life this year. And this year, the Texas Cavaliers did something a little bit different. They hired Kern Studios to help design and create these floats that will be hitting the water. Barry Kern, the president and CEO of Kern Studios, talked to us more about some of the things that viewers and people that are going to be attending the parade can expect to see this year. We've got these huge, larger than life, three dimensional props that will all have special um, lighting. There's LED lighting that's all computer driven that will be designed so each float will have a very distinct and different look. More than 50 floats and barges will hit the water for this year's River Parade and many of them featuring local community groups, also children's charities and officials and also celebrities as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you plan to come down here, tickets are still available online. All you got to do is check out the Texas Cavaliers website and don't forget you can also watch it live on KSAT and KSAT.com this Monday at 7 p.m. Reporting from downtown, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Well, I am so excited for that. Myself and David Sears will be out there for the River Parade, but I know we are paying close attention to the forecast, as are a lot of people over the next couple of days. That's right, a chance for rain, mm -hmm. possibly on Monday. But let's go back out to Adam Kasky at Fiesta Fiesta, who knows all about that. Yes, and you know, what's important now is it's not raining and for an event like this. There's no severe weather threat. That's the key, no lightning threat. Uh, we could use some rain. It'd be nice to have it because it's very dry out here. We do have the chance that you talked about in the extended forecast, and we'll get into that in a bit. We've moved locations down. We got away from Pin Pandemonium, and now we're closer to the main stage where people are gathering. You can see some fun hats off at the distance. I love the hats out here. There's just so much creativity at Fiesta Fiesta and so much excitement as well. That's another thing I love about it because we're just kicking off the party with a purpose. We're going to be back with your forecast, talk about how cool it's going to be tomorrow morning, temperatures through the weekend, and even as we get into Fiesta events next week in just a bit. As you're making your Fiesta plans for this year, you're of course going to keep an eye on the forecast to figure out how that could affect things having no impact on Fiesta Fiesta though, which is where Adam Kasky is. It's a beautiful night That's out cool. there. That's cool. Forecast is fun, right Kasky? Oh my gosh. It is so much fun. Come on, get over here. We just got live. Oh my, t tell me, tell me about what you're wearing here. It's a cascade on. That's so beautiful. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's it goes along with your confetti. Right, I yes. know. Well, we've got a little. Wait, it's in my back pocket. My other pocket. <laughs> Where is your pocket? My, my confetti. Where's your confetti? <laughs> you're out. Oh, 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 oh my God. <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, I can kind of match you here. There we go. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. The creativity is flowing out here. We just had, yes, Viva Fiesta to you. And we just had a human pinata walk down the street. That was fun. He's out of view now. I can't find him, but that was a good outfit and a lot of others as well. Really quickly, we'll get to the temperatures and the wind and everything else. And the readings right now, 80 degrees here in town, but that's quickly going to change. The sun is getting lower and in the shade here, the temperature's falling off pretty quickly. Not much of a breeze either. All right, let's get to the maps full screen. Calm wind of this evening. Actually, it's gonna be perfect for the fireworks. But as we get into tomorrow, the wind is gonna pick up a little bit. It's not gonna be outrageous like what we've had in days past, but yeah, you know, some gusts to 20, 25 miles per hour. Sure, that'll be the case. And that's gonna be noticeable, of course. Dew points will be on the rise because that wind is coming off the Gulf of Mexico. In turn, dew points are up this weekend back to the muggy range, you know, 60 to lower 60s. So you'll notice some mugginess back in the air then. And that's also going to lead to some warmer mornings at that point. For this weekend, afternoon temperatures, 
sailing through the 80s. 86 on Saturday, Sunday 88. We'll have some morning clouds, but you know, otherwise we'll have some sunny afternoons and it's going to be pretty pleasant. You just notice that extra humidity, but remember, it takes humidity to make rain. We need that. And our next chance of rain comes on Monday. Right now it's just an isolated opportunity, so some pop-up afternoon showers and storms could develop Monday. I think a slightly better chance as we get into Monday night for some scattered activity. And yes, we all know that is the river parade. No need to worry at the moment because a lot still needs to be fine tuned in terms of exact placement and timing of those potential storms. What would cause it, a little bit of upper, ener upper level energy coming in. You see that upper level load that's gonna drop into West Texas Monday and Monday night. Out ahead of it, around the base of that trough, giving us some kick, giving us some energy to lift the air and get some showers and storms going. And you know, I tell you, we could use the rain. That is for sure. Light breeze this evening, really almost calm out here. No humidity, feels good. Comfortable for an event like this and really safe weather to be honest with you with no storm threat and no lightning threat. And also, people just aren't sweating like they normally are. You don't have as high of like a heat stroke or heat exhaustion threat. Temperatures this, this evening falling down into the 60s and by tomorrow morning, we're right near 50 degrees. By the afternoon, sunny in 84. Gusts, as I mentioned, up to about 30 miles per hour at times, but mostly about 20. 25 miles per hour. Temperatures next week for Fiesta events, we're getting back up to 90 degrees. So you're gonna notice what's more typical of Fiesta in terms of warmth outside, back up to the 90 degree mark. Everybody's starting to gather around here, getting ready for the events. Y'all are so fun, I love them. Hello, it's so fun to have such great people around. Viva Fiesta. We're all having a good time. We're kind of keeping an eye out for some of the best hats. Ooh, there's a good one over there, Adam. Yeah, there we go. I see a lot of margaritas on that. It's very fiesta out, if you will. And you know what? <clears throat> Myra Arthur, it is fiesta now. Yes. You know what that means. You were mad at me earlier today. And why? I'll let you answer. <laughs> okay. Fiesta hair is coming, Caskey. It will be here on yes. Monday for the River Parade. Okay? Promise. Pinky swear. Pinky, Pinky swear. swear. You got it. It's coming. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. He asks for federal holidays as well and his birthday. Yeah, but nothing beats Fiesta hair for Myra. <laughs> it's coming, along with the humidity, apparently, on Monday. <laughs> Makes it easier. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. Of our brightest colors on today for the first day of Fiesta San Antonio. Good morning, it's Thursday the 31st. San Antonio police say three people are in the hospital and two suspects detained this morning after a shooting at an apartment complex on the west side. Happened around eight last night in the 300 block of Calle Street. Uh, police say officers arrived at the scene to find a woman, a man, and a 14 year old with a gunshot wound. They were taken to a local hospital by EMS and are in stable condition. Fire investigators are trying to determine the cause of a house fire that destroyed a home on the city's far north side early this morning. The fire was called in around 12:30 a.m. at a home in the 15,100 block of Rock River Street, not far from Loop 1604 and Bulverde Road. Firefighters managed to get the fire under control quickly and without incident. A reminder about changes on the St. Mary Strip. Starting tonight, barriers will be in place to keep drivers out of the residential areas near the bars and clubs in the Tobin Hill area. And uh, take that into account and consider using ride share. Yes, get ready my friends. First at five, it is official. Fiesta Fiesta is underway and an hour into San Antonio's largest celebration, you can see the crowd there is just starting to show up. Hello and welcome to Fiesta Fiesta. And boy, are things ever cooking right now. Look at this great crowd we have behind us. People handing out medals, people collecting medals. We even have a former El Rey Feo behind us. Absolutely. <laughs> Fernando Reyes. <laughs> Absolutely.
know, every view we take, the crowd just keeps getting bigger. Sky 12 above Fiesta Fiesta still out there at Hemisphere this evening. We've seen from our crews on the ground more and more people coming out, and we keep talking about it. Everybody's got two years of pent up fiesta ing. Yeah, it might be uh, eager to get out there and have some celebrating in the streets. We have seen the pin pandemonium. We've seen the people's parade. We have heard the fiesta music stinger multiple times. <laughs> it is like officially fiesta here <laughs> in San Antonio now and beautiful weather for all of it to happen on this first night kicking things off. Yes, we always hope for weather like this. What we're experiencing, what those folks are experiencing this evening was a bit warm to start. We topped out in the 80s this afternoon, but as that sun continues to get lower and lower, temperatures will be in the 70s, eventually the 60s this evening. So really pleasant weather. Tomorrow we start to off near 50, so a somewhat cool start, but nice and warm again by the afternoon, and the wind will be much more noticeable tomorrow than it was today. This weekend, things gradually get a little bit warmer each afternoon. The humidity will be a bit more noticeable again by the weekend as well, and that leads us to Monday, the River Parade. We do have a chance of some isolated thunder showers Monday and then some scattered rain very late Monday night. We're going to keep a really close eye on that River Parade forecast for you in the next few days, guys. All right, thank you, Katie, and don't forget our Fiesta Fiesta special kicks off at 8 o'clock. We'll see you then. Have a good night.